Hi everyone, my name is Zhong Zhenxiong. I'm the first author of this paper, and I'm a PhD student from Fudan University in China. This paper is a joint work from researchers from Fudan University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and Tencent Corporation. In this paper, we studied the sparse distribution estimation problem under local privacy constraint. Distribution estimation is a fundamental problem of statistics. Given NID samples from some annual distribution, this task requires to give an estimation of the distribution through the samples. We consider discrete distributions here, and we assume P is a K array vector, with each prediction being a probability value. In real world applications, these samples are distributed across different users and often contain sensitive information. For example, the usage of emoji on iPhone. Thus, web service providers cannot directly collect users' raw data for analysis. A popular solution is local differential privacy, which has been adopted by several technology organizations, including Google, Microsoft, and Apple. Differential privacy is one of the most popular, powerful definitions of privacy since proposed. We consider local differential privacy here, where users privatize their data by some mechanism before releasing it so as to keep their personal data private, even from the data collectors. More specifically, a privatized mechanism Q is a random mapping with some transition probability. The mapping Q is said to be optional and locally differentiable private if for all x and x prime and y, we will have qrx over qrx prime in less than e to the epsilon. So given the privatized sample y, it's hard to tell whether it's from x or x prime, in which sense the privacy is protected. We consider distribution estimation and the LDP. Still, we have n samples from p but these samples will be first privatized by some optional LDP mappings. Then the server needs to give an estimation of P only through these privatized samples. The goal is to design optional LDP mappings and give an accurate estimation of P. If all users use the same privatized mapping, we call the privatization scheme symmetric, otherwise it's asymmetric. There are two important complexity parameters we care about. The first is the sample complexity, defined as the least samples to satisfy accuracy and privacy constraints. In the local model, the communication cost is also important. The communication complexity here is the number of bits one user needs to send to a server. For general distributions, the worst case error has been well understood and the optimal sample complexity is roughly okay. However, real-world inputs often contain special structures that allow one to bypass such worst-case barriers. We consider sparse or approximately sparse distributions, which are perhaps the most natural structure, structure distributions. If the number of non-zero in P is at most S, we call it S sparse, and let PS be the S sparse vector that contains the top S entries of P. Uh, we say P is approximately S lambda sparse if the L1 error between P and PI is less than lambda. We aim to utilize the sparsity structure to achieve sublinear sample complexity. This problem has been recently studied, However, but existing technique implicitly requires a larger than K that cannot achieve sublinear sample complexity. To solve this problem, we propose a series of privatization schemes called compressive privatization based on compressive sensing. These schemes achieve optimal sample and communication complexity simultaneously for both sparse and approximate sparse distributions. More specifically, we propose the three privatization schemes for different parameter settings. For high privacy, high privacy regime where optional is less than one, we designed both asymmetric and symmetric schemes. And we also extend our method to medium privacy regime where optional lies between one and log s by model-based compressive sensing. 
So before, uh, we dive into the details of the privatization schemes, I'll first give a brief introduction of compressive sensing first. The goal of CIS is to solve the following ill-defined equation, where B is an underdetermined matrix and E denotes some unknown noise. Theory from size give us the following recovery guarantee. When B satisfies some additional pr property called the IP, it's noted that this recovery guarantee is applicable for both exactly sparse and approximately sparse input. And all the matrices we use the, in our schemes that will satisfy RIP so that we can apply this recovery guarantee directly. The first scheme I will introduce is called the one bit compressive privatization. We will use a matrix A for privatization, where the entries of A is either one or minus one. Users will be first partitioned into M groups. And for use I in group J, YJ is generated according to AJXI by this distribution. Apparently, this privatization scheme satisfies optional LDP. Since y is either one or zero, it only needs one bit to send y. By standard theory from compressive sensing, for m equals o s log k over s, there exists an IP matrix, matrix A with one or minus one as its entries. And we will use this matrix in, a, in one bit compressive privatization scheme. Next, we show how to estimate, estimate P after this receiving Y. Let TJ be such a probability. A key observation is that T and P has the following relation. A natural idea is to use first recovery to recover P from T. However, the exact T is still unknown. We can only get an empirical estimate of T from the privatized samples. Thus, instead of using T to recover P, we use its empirical estimation t height to recover p, and this will result in an error term. So by reformulation, we can get the following equation, and the t height is the empirical estimation of t. Now, um, the estimation of p becomes a standard CS problem, where the recovery error is bounded by the estimation error of t. Since T is only M dimensional, where M is much less than key, it needs much less samples to get an accurate estimation of T. And that's why our method can achieve a sublinear sample complexity. By the recovery guarantee, our one bit CP achieves the following sublinear sample complexity for both sparse and approximately sparse distributions. And the sample complexity matches with existing neural bound which shows that our, our, our result is optimal. One bit CP is an asymmetric scheme since users in different groups apply different privatization scheme. Now we introduce a symmetric version, which could be easier to implement in real applications. We still use a plus minus one matrix A for privatization. Each user will use the same matrix to generate the privatized sample. Thus, it's a symmetric scheme. Our Q is a mapping from K to M. For each X in K, we define the set CX to be this stores whose X positions are plus one. And NX is the cardinality of CX. QYX is defined as follows. Generally speaking, given an input, given an input X, if AYX is one, then, Y will be generated with higher probability. By standard theory from size, there exists a matrix A that satisfies the following two properties. And we will use this matrix in our symmetric scheme. We first provide the privacy guarantee of this scheme. By definition and uh, property one of A is that each NX is M over two. Uh, it's not difficult to show that Q is optional LDP. And uh, the estimation of P is similar as before. Let Q be the distribution of Y. And by some calculation, we can find that Q and P satisfy the following linear equation. And we can use empirical estimation of Q to re recover P like what we did in one bit case. 
after reformulation and simplification, the estimation of P is once again a standard response recovery problem. By recovery guaranteeing, the estimation error of P will be upper bounded by the estimation error of Q, which is only M dimensional and M is much less than key. So here we can get the same set optimal sample complexity as that of one bit scheme. But since Y ranges from one to M now, the communication complexity is old log M now. Existing research has shown that for symmetric scheme, O log K bits are necessary for general distributions. Thus, even if the sparse support is known, the communication cost is at, at least the log S bits. Thus, ours is optimal up to a small addictive term, which is log log K over S. Uh, we also extend compressive privatization to medium privacy region where if you know is larger than one, but less than log s. For medium privacy, the relationship between sample complexity, uh, privacy, and the communication costs becomes more complicated. The high level idea of RCP is still to use, uh, IP, use an IP matrix for privatization and model the estimation as a sparse recovery problem. However, only using a standard size technique like before cannot achieve the, the optimal result in this regime. Thus, we use a more complicated compressive sensing technique called hierarchical compressive sensing to balance privacy and the communication constraints. And the, the result is summarized as follows. An interesting thing we find that uh, for, is, is that for medium privacy, the sample complexity is determined by the more stringent constraint and the last stringent constraint can be satisfied for free. Uh, besides theoretical guaranteeing, we also conducted experiments to verify our theoretical results. We chose hard mode response and its one bit version equipped with first projection as the baseline. HR on the, the optimal sample complexity for dense distributions with log, but with log K communication costs. While one bit HR with sparse projection has the same sample complexity as ours, it requires a larger than K implicitly. Here, sparse projection means to the top S entries of the estimation returned by HR as the final result. We test the performance on two types of sparse distributions, including the uniform distribution and the geometric distribution. We record the L1 error of different methods with varying number of samples and from 50,000 to, to 1 million. Here are part of the results. The orange and the red lines represent the previous methods for dense distributions like HR. It can be seen from the picture that the performance of our compressive privatization approach is significantly better than this method, which is aligned with our theoretical bound. Since we set K to 10,000, 10, which is much smaller than the sample size, sample size N, the one bit HR with sparse projection is well defined. And the performance com compared to our method is almost the same. This is not, this is not surprising as both methods have the same theoretical sample complexity. On the other hand, when K is set much larger, for example, uh, one million, one bit HR is not, not well defined when the number of samples is less than K. Thus the blue line, which represents the one bit HR starts when N exceeds one million. We note that HR with sparse projection still performs well in this case, but each user will incur log K bits of communication. Our one bit CP only need one bit to achieve the same accuracy. For our symmetric CP method, the communication cost, which is log S plus log log K over S, is also lower than HR. Um, to summarize, in this paper, we study sparse distribution estimation in the local differential privacy model. We propose compressive sensing-based method. For high privacy regime, we provide asymmetric and symmetric schemes, both of which achieves optimal sample and communication complexity. We also extend a compressive privatization to medium privacy regime and obtain near optimal sample complexity for any privacy and the communication constraints.